the report and the Q and A. And she has been devoted to a plant-based, plant-exclusive diet for nearly 45 years. She was the host of the television series Healthy Living with Chef AJ, which airs on Foodie TV. She's a chef, a culinary instructor, and professional speaker. Author of a popular book, A Process, How to Achieve by Your Health and Your Ideal Weight, which chronicles her journey from an obese junk food vegan faced with a diagnosis of precancerous polyps to learning how to create foods that nourish and heal the body. Her latest best-selling books, The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss, A Revolutionary Approach to Conquer Cravings, Overcome Food Addiction and Lose Weight Without Going Hungry, and also Own Your Health. I've received long endorsement by many luminaries and plant-based movement. Chef AJ was the executive pastry chef at Santa Rosa, I'm sorry, at Santa Restaurant in Los Angeles, where she was famous for her sugar, oil, and salt and gluten-free desserts with juice of fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. So here's Chef AJ, give a round of applause. Woo! Thank you. Hi. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, everybody. How much time do I have to cook? Because I'll decide how many recipes then. One hour. One hour. Okay, great. And thank you for mentioning, I actually have a newer best-selling book now that just came out, my 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed. And I know it's 1230 where you guys are, but it's 930 here. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be cooking onions and garlic this early. So what I'm going to do is make foods that are suitable for breakfast, snacks or brunch. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some waffle hash browns. And these are really easy to make. You can certainly grate the potatoes yourself, but I love it that stores carry grated potatoes, russet potatoes, organic with nothing in it but the potato. And I got these at Sprouts, but I've seen them at Whole Foods. I've seen them at Trader Joe's, even at the local Winco. And so last night, since I knew I was going to make this, I defrosted it in the refrigerator. And now what I'm going to do is just squeeze out the extra liquid. And this is a paint straining bag. You can buy nut milk bags at Whole food stores and online, and they're great, but they're about eight or nine dollars. If you go to the paint store and get one that hasn't been used for paint, you'll pay about 99 cents. And these are great for if you're defrosting spinach or kale for, for a lasagna or a dip. These are just so great to use because then you don't get your hands all full. So we just stick the potatoes in there, and you'll do the same thing. Even if you were to grate the potatoes by hand, you would still want to squeeze out the extra water because. If you don't, it's not that they wouldn't cook, but you're just gonna greatly increase your cooking time. And these paint straining bags can be made to make homemade plant milk. I do this all the time when I teach my hands-on cooking classes at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico. We make homemade almond milk. And it's just a little bit easier than using cheesecloth, in my opinion. You can do this with sweet potatoes too. In the freezer section, at least, at, I live in the desert, but at my Whole Foods and Sprouts, they have root vegetable hash. And so I've done this with a mixture of they'll do like grated carrots and parsnips and potatoes. And it's really a great way to get something that's really crunchy, almost like a cracker, but instead of being made out of flour, it's made out of a whole food, in this case, potatoes. Like I said, you could do this with sweet potatoes, but I find that, I don't know if it's because sweet potatoes have more sugar, it, that sweet potatoes can will often stick and this won't. So like I said, I have been preheating my waffle iron. I just have a $30 waffle iron that I got on Amazon. I have no connection to the company is called Dash and I've had it for many years and it works well. So you can't give an exact time. What I always recommend is do 10 minutes and then check it. But definitely if you're doing things like waffles, you definitely don't want to open it early because that, you know, that kind of messes it up. So I could have done this in advance. I'm not the strongest person in the world, <laughs> but there we go. We see that we got most of it out, but there seems to be a little bit more hanging on. That's fine. And so I'm going to go show you my over here and what I'm going to do. It's just open it up. The green light is on, which means it's preheat, preheated. This is a Belgian waffle maker, which I prefer to a regular. And you could also use a panini press for this. Well, what's nice about a panini press is that if you want to make like a pizza crust, panini press is flat. It won't have these indentations from the Belgian waffle. But a panini press tends to be a little bit more expensive than a waffle iron, usually about $60 versus about $30. And then I'm just going to spread it out. And if you wanted to season this, you could. I just love it like this. And then you can put on, you know, ketchup or barbecue sauce, or I like to eat this with soup actually as more of a cracker. So I'm just going to spread this out, all the nooks and crannies, and I'm going to close the top. 
And then I'm gonna say, Alexa, set an alarm for 10 minutes. Alexa, set an alarm for 10 minutes. Listen. 10 minutes. There we go. It might take as long as 20. So that's the first thing we want to do. And again, don't limit yourself to breakfast recipes for breakfast. So one of my favorite recipes is carrot cake granola. And it's wonderful as a travel snack, as a breakfast. You know, most granola is just full of sugar fat. So if you look at, say, for example, Quaker 100% Natural, which came around in the 70s when I was like 10 years old, I used to love it, but it's like candy. It's like crap, but you can easily make your own granola. And I'm going to show you how very few ingredients that I just happen to have around the house, because I always base my demos really on what I have, not what I can get, because even though I have Trader Joe's sprouts and whole foods, they're like 30 minutes away. If I can't get it at the local Winco. I tend not to make it because I feel if it's at the Winco, most people in most cities can get it. So the first thing I'm going to do is puree some bananas. And that's what I'm using as my sweetener. Um, if you can't have bananas, I don't have a sub for them, unfortunately, because I'm using them for moisture and sweetness in a way to not have to use dates so much. Dates are very healthy, but I work with a lot of people trying to lose weight. Dates are much more calorically dense. They're 1,300 calories a pound versus 400 for bananas. But the secret when using bananas, and we're also going to use these to bake the cinnamon buns, is you want them as ripe as possible. You know, they don't need to be black, black, but the more spots they have, the sweeter they're going to be. And this is going to be my sugar, the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. So I'm just putting them in the blender to make a banana puree. And then I'm going to put it aside because I realized I really want to get the cinnamon buns in the oven so that hopefully they'll be done before my presentation is. You can absolutely use bananas that have been frozen. My advice to you though, is freeze them when they're at their peak of ripeness and always peel them. You won't get the peel off if you uh, freeze them with the peel on. The other thing is realize that when you freeze bananas and defrost them, there's gonna be like a lot of liquid and that's very delicious. That's the sugary liquid. So sometimes that affects in baking, you might have to add a little more of whatever you're using like oats or if you're using flour, just because it does, I don't know exactly what happens in freezing to do that, but it's just something to be mindful of. So I'm just gonna puree this. Very easy, that took maybe 10 seconds. This is yummy. You can do so many things with this. You know, I'm gonna be making this in a dehydrator and I'll tell you how you can also do it in an oven even though I've never done this. But you can actually just put this in a food, uh, food dehydrator and you have like fruit leather or it's like banana candy, almost like a candy that I used to have growing up called the banana now and later. Let me just preheat my oven, I'll be right back. Uh, there we go. So now I'm gonna be making, here's my little book, here we go. A recipe from my ebook, it's called a date with dessert. And these are called cinnamon buns that are good for your buns, but I've been asked to rename them cinnamon, cinnamon bun cupcakes because they're more like cupcakes. So, so I, I did this strategically so I wouldn't have to wash my blender in between each recipe. So again, with the ripe bananas, which we are going to put in the blender. What's nice about this cinnamon bun recipe is I love recipes that can be repurposed into other recipes. And what we're making here for cinnamon buns, you can also turn into either pancakes or waffles. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that as we go along. First, let me get these in the blender. And again, I'm gonna just puree them. Okay, two on. And then I'm gonna add my non-dairy milk. You can use any non-dairy milk you like. I, I avoid sugar, oil, and salt. So I find a brand that doesn't contain those or I make them myself in something called a natural milk machine. And there's only a few dates in here, but I pre-soak them because even though I have a high powered blender, it just makes it go faster when you pre-soak the dates. And I'm going to now puree this. Then I'm going to add my dry ingredients.
because I don't use any oil in my cooking or baking. I really recommend silicone cookware or bakeware. These are not very expensive. This was about $14 on Amazon. I've also seen them in Michael's, Walmart, any kind of cake decorating or candy decorating store. What's nice is that nothing sticks. I don't recommend the liners, for, especially for this recipe because it will stick. You'll lose a lot of the, the muffin part. And it's also kind of wasteful to the environment to keep using paper like that. What's really cool about this is one of the secrets to, well, I, I was a pastry chef at a restaurant for five years, the executive vegan pastry chef. It wasn't even a vegan restaurant. But one of the secrets in baking is people tend to want to eat it right away and they don't let it cool. When you let things cool, they're not going to stick. But what's really cool about this is if they tried to give me any trouble, and stick, boom, it wouldn't. So this is a 12 cup one. I've seen them in all different shapes and sizes. So now I have my banana puree with my almond milk and a few dates. And then I'm gonna add my rolled oats. I happen to use gluten-free because I am gluten-free by necessity. But even years before, I always did everything gluten-free because I always share my food and there's always gonna be somebody that is gluten-free. It just seems that way. And then my spices which is a good quality cinnamon. I prefer the Saigon Cassia cinnamon from a place like Local Spicery. It's just, it's sweeter and it has a sugar-like taste without sugar. So now this is gonna be a very thick batter, but I am going to blend it in the blender. Let me get my spatula. You can see how thick this is compared to often cake batters, which are much more runny. That's why it's like the perfect batter for either pancakes or waffles. And then uh, I'm gonna use some yellow raisins also for sweetness. You can stir these in by hand later, or you can actually blend them in. The choice is yours. I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do in a second, but now I'm gonna add my aluminum-free baking powder. You can actually get sodium-free baking powder if you're completely SOS-free at many health food stores or on Amazon and my apple cider vinegar. And you're gonna see it kind of poof up because this is actually a secret that I'm gonna tell you about. It causes some kind of chemical reaction and it actually makes it kind of like eggs. It's really remarkable. And so I'm gonna put my raisins in and you can see it's like, just, it's like puffing up like a volcano. I'm just gonna quickly pulse these. I'm not gonna puree them, but it's just easier than me stirring it in. There we go. You can, you can see, look, it just keeps rising and rising just like a volcano. Look at that, isn't that cool? All right, so that's what we wanted to do in the oven. So I'm just gonna stir this in and then I'm gonna put it in my muffin cups. And these take about 30 minutes to bake. So hopefully, oh, my oven's preheated now. These will be done in time because I wanna show you how to make the frosting, which is delicious and made out of a secret ingredient. And again, I don't use any sugar, oil, or salt. And I rarely, rarely use flour in my baking. So now, I think I'm going to get a little uh, a scoop to do this. There we go. You can see how airy it is. It's going to have to settle down a bit. It will. This is a brand new can of baking powder. I've never quite seen it get this this uh, intense before. But again, it's, it's a lot of air. So yeah, I remember having a book when I was very young, uh, probably in my teens, if not my low twenties. And it was a collection from Hershey's. And it was something like, you know, back in the day, you, you used to be able to send away in for things if you saved labels and box tops and such. And they had something that was like called a depression cake. And because I guess in the depression, it, it was hard to get eggs. And, you know, I've been vegan for 45 years. And the thing is, is, you know, if people want to eat animal products because they like them, okay, you know, whatever, I can't change their mind, but you don't need animal products to make dessert. You certainly don't need eggs for baking. You don't need, you don't need anything. I mean, dessert is really a great way to get people enrolled in eating this way because you don't need animal products. But anyway, during the depression, they were, the people still wanted to bake and they could get things like, but uh, they, they had trouble getting butter, I guess, and eggs, but they could get oil and they, they uh, 
they baked by doing this system where they would take baking powder or baking soda. They, they didn't use apple cider vinegar back then. I don't think it was usually like Heinz white vinegar. But the point was, as you can see how this proved it up even before baking, and that did the same thing that eggs did. So eggs really, when people feel like they need them, like in souffles or stuff, Alexa off. Let me check my waffle. Not done. Alexa said, oh, let me show them that it's not done though, but you can see it's getting done, but I want it a little bit crisper. Alexa, set an alarm for 10 minutes. Yeah. So every waffle iron is going to be different and every oven is going to be different, by the way. And you know, when you're a chef at a restaurant, you have a thermometer that's hanging there. So you always see what the true temperature is, not what you're putting it on. And I always recommend people get an inexpensive oven thermometer just to make sure it's calibrated. So this made 12 muffins, which is perfect. That's how many holes there are. And again, if I was going to do this for waffles, I would do the same thing in the waffle maker. And if you know how to make pancakes, the same thing. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven and be right back. Okay, 30 minutes, there we go. All right. So now let's get back to the granola while we're waiting for the waffle. Most people love carrot cake and carrot cake granola is just my way of sneaking in vegetables in a dessert. And you really don't taste the carrots and even if you did, it would be fine because carrots are sweet. So I'm gonna be using my food processor here just to get the carrots a little bit finer. If you like them to be long shred, feel free. But I'm often feeding people that don't want to eat healthy, so the more I can disguise the vegetables. I'm just getting a 10 ounce bag of shredded carrots. This happens to be from Trader Joe's, but they also sell this at Greenco too. Or you can just, you know, shred it yourself. I really do recommend a food scale, not for weighing and measuring your food because you're trying to lose weight. But uh, for accuracy in baking, I find that uh, that's what we did in the restaurant. We weighed everything, even the baking soda, the vinegar. And I just had one that was less than $15 at Bed Bath & Beyond. I got it years ago. It's from Cuisine Art. And what I love about it, it's got a flat base. So when we have to mail packages, we can also do that and get our label done without going to the post office. So I'm going to just get these even more finely shredded. And then I'm just going to pour it in to my banana puree. There go. Very easy. I like to create recipes that have ingredients that anyone can pretty much find anywhere, and usually with seven ingredients or less, not counting water. Let me get my oats. I'm going to show you a little bit different about the cinnamon. I'm going to add some applesauce. If you have a machine like a Vitamix or a Nutra Milk, you can make your own applesauce really easily. Take the core out and put it in the machine, or you can make cooked applesauce very easily in the instant pot. So this is unsweetened applesauce. I'm going to add it. And applesauce is great for baking without oil because it keeps things very moist. And cinnamon. Yeah, just pop them on yourself. I got scared there for a minute. I'm looking for my vanilla powder. It's really quite important to this recipe. Maybe I put it in the refrigerator. Yep, I did. Okay. Now, I say two to three tablespoons of cinnamon because it really depends how cinnamon, cinnamony you want it. But I find in dehydrated recipes, it 
you need more than in a baking recipe. So really use what you like. My, my philosophy is when people ask me what ingredient should I get, what piece of equipment should I get, get the best that you can afford. And the, the, the Saigon cinnamon from Costco, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good. The cinnamon from Whole Foods is good. But if you're a cinnamon aficionado and want it to taste really sweet and delicious, doesn't have to be from local spicery. I just happen to like this brand that sells a lot of SOS free spices, Saigon Cassia Cinnamon. I, I really recommend if you have a spice store in your neighborhood, this is in Tiburon and in Marysville, but there's Penzi's and there's, um, what's that one called? The other one, Penzi's and the other famous one, Savory Spice, where you can actually taste it because when people taste this, they accuse the, the shopkeep of putting sugar in it. It's so, so sweet. So for a dessert recipe, I really, really like to use this because it's incredible. So I'm putting in three tablespoons of this and I know that's a lot, but in this recipe, you need it. And then my vanilla powder. Once you get accustomed to using vanilla powder, most people tell me they'll never go back to extract because it's not very good. It's basically just either sugar water or alcohol water. This is the real stuff. This is ground vanilla beans and it just makes quite a difference in recipes. I have it in the muffin as well, and it's gonna go in the frosting to the muffin. And then I like to use yellow raisins for lots of reasons. One, I don't know, I just think they taste better. They, they Yellow raisins to me taste sweet, whereas dark raisins, they have kind of a strong raisiny taste. I'm trying to open the bag is the hardest part. There we go. And so I've never done this in an oven, but I can tell you what Kathy Fisher, my friend, has told me what she does is um, not necessarily for this recipe, but for her granola recipes is 250 for about an hour and then kind of crack the oven door. The thing that's really nice about food dehydrators is they do exactly that. Uh, you can keep them on even if you're not home because it's basically just a fan that blows and they really do take the liquid out. So things that are dehydrated really, uh, they have a very, very long shelf life as opposed to the oven, which, you know, your oven, I don't think goes down to lower than 200, whereas dehydrator doesn't go higher than 160. And so, you know, you don't have to get an expensive one. If you have the Breville air fryer, it has a dehydrating feature. So I'm just gonna mix all the ingredients here together. And then I'm gonna add my oats. You're going to need quite a few probably about five cups. This is a half cup measure, but you kind of know by the consistency. I said most granola is just full of a lot of sugar or maple syrup, oil, salt, and this is all made from whole foods. So, I mean, not, not that I want to eat this, but you could, and I could probably bake this into a cake too. It'd be a great carrot cake, but it's so good dehydrated. So we're kind of looking for a texture here. And so it's not gonna be an exact number of cups because like I said, some people are going to be using their bananas from the freezer, which means they're kind of a little bit more liquidy. But if it is too liquidy, it's just gonna take a little bit longer to dehydrate. And if it's too dry, it just won't be quite as delicious. So because I'm not a raw foodist, I'm not really concerned about what the temperature of my dehydrator is. I know that raw foodists, I believe, don't do anything over 118 degrees, but if you are a raw foodist, you probably wouldn't be using oats anyway. So I just crank it up all the way to what I think it's 140 or 160. And then I'm gonna spread it on the tray. I'm gonna show you in a minute. It's covered with what's called a Teflex sheet. A Teflex sheet is something you get, I got, nine of them for $27 years ago, and you can reuse them. Whereas parchment paper, you know, it's a one-time one use. So just gonna keep adding this a little bit to get it just right. Um, this stuff is, is, to me, is almost addictive. This is, and once it's dried, it's so delicious. It's, I think it's the best granola I've ever had. And I do have several granola recipes. One as simple as just banana and oats doing this, which I call game-changing granola. And then I have one that, that does use dates. So if you really, really wanted a sweet one, I have one that, that uses quite a few dates and even some nuts, which, you know, you could, I mean, I'm not prohibited from adding other things to that. So this is pretty good now. It's, I mean, it's still moist, but this is kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna get my trays. And what I try to do is so it will dehydrate evenly. 
wish I had a finished product to show you, but there's never any finished product because it's so good. So I'm not going to go through doing this on every tray now. I'm just going to do it on one tray to give you the idea. And then when we're done, I will I will do the other trays and pop them in the behavior because this will not be ready anyway. So what I usually do, it's about four cups on a thing. I'll put four cups. So I usually get about three trays out of this, but I try to do the same amount on every tray so it dries evenly. And then using either food service gloves or wet hands, which I will do right now, clean wet hands. I'm just gonna press this down. Alexa off. I'm gonna show you the waffle in just a second. So I just wanna press it down evenly. And this little sheet here is called the Teflex. And so what I'm gonna do is I will dry it for a couple of hours until this feels dry to the touch. And then I flip it onto another tray where it's going to dry on the screen. And that's how these Teflex sheets work. So if I'm drying something like tomatoes for sun-dried tomatoes or bananas or something like that, you can do it right on the screen. But for something that's wet like this, you wanna use a Teflex. I'm just gonna wet my hands again to get it spread out more. And again, it probably could have fit a little bit more on, but when I flip it, I usually break it up in the pieces I want then because as it continues to dry, it gets pretty hard and then it's, it's a little bit harder to break. So that looks pretty good. I mean, if you want it to be perfect, you can. So we're gonna pop that in the dehydrator and now we're gonna show you the waffle. We get a plate. And you know, waffle makers, uh, well, at least mine is non-stick. I don't use any oil. You don't need to use any oil, regardless of what the manufacturer says, but you want to get something that's not going to damage it when you take it out. So, oh wow, that's beautiful. Oh wow, look at this. This is so crunchy and delicious. I mean, I like to believe it or not, put applesauce and onion on mine because I'm Jewish and that's how I used to eat potato pancakes. But I don't know if you can, you can hear, this is so crunchy. So for those that miss crunch, you don't have to have French fries or potato chips with oil. These are delicious. And you can have that Mr. Cameraman, if you like for your breakfast, so feel free to eat it now. Would you like some ketchup with that? Sure. Okay, so we've got Charles working hard behind the scenes here. Let me give him some ketchup. So um, we have a ketchup without sugar. This one has salt, but if you like one without salt, Dylan Holmes, Well Your World makes wonderful SOS free dressings. Okay, so we're gonna show you the frosting now that we're going to make for the muffins. We're not gonna be able to frost them in real time because you do have to let them cool. And then depending on how much time we have, I have like so many other recipes I can do. But I like the fact that I'm showing you, you know, if you don't have to spend a lot of time to make healthy food. I'm just going to, uh, rinse this food processor. So talk amongst yourselves. So if you have a question for me while I'm rinsing it, that would be fine. I might have time to make a frappuccino even, but I didn't. I didn't measure out the ingredients, but I'll just go and get them for you. Uh, the cinnamon bun recipe, by the way, I always keep it. Like I, I can show you. I have some in my freezer right now, and I'll either frost them and after I have them. I used to love Cinnabons, but they're like, I don't know, like 2,000 calories for one of them, aren't they? And have like 56 grams of fat. Okay, so now we're going to make the frosting. And I make my frosting out of Hanna Yams. If you haven't had Hanna Yams, man, you haven't had it. They are, in my opinion, the best potato or sweet potato there is. So what they look like is on the inside, they're this color, which it, they're almost a, like yellowish, but uh, they're not white. And on the outside, the skin is beige. And depending on where you live, they could be called Hanningham's. White sweet potatoes is often the name of the regular type of store, like a Ralph's or Winco. They could be called Jersey sweet potatoes. The second choice I would say would be the Japanese, the Murasaki or the Korean. You don't want to use, well, I mean, you could use the orange ones, but yeah. 
I like the orange ones and you know, if I'm having mashed sweet potatoes or sweet potato fries or sweet potato burgers, but in desserts, these are unparalleled because they have a very creamy texture and they already have a subtle vanilla flavor. So they're perfect for desserts. And so I eat these almost every day for lunch anyway. So I just batch cook a bunch of them and then peel them after they've cooled. And uh, I freeze them in one or two cup servings, depending on what recipe I'm making. So uh, this is for the frosting. And I just took these out of the freezer this morning and they're already defrosted. So I'm putting them in my food processor. And then I'm going to add my vanilla powder. Where did I put it? Oh my God. It's like, it disappeared. Did I put it back in the fridge? Oh, guys, this vanilla powder is really important in this one. No? This one's empty. Yeah. Well, this one, like you said, this one's empty, but I had it a second ago. Ah, oh, St. Anthony, St. Anthony, please come around for what is lost must now. Has anybody seen my vanilla powder? Ah, here it is. It was turned upside down. That's why it looked like this. And again, I'm not married to any brand. I have a few in my Amazon store. This one had the number one rating on Amazon. It was an affordable price. So I got that one. All good. But vanilla powder is simply ground vanilla beans. Never get the vanilla imitation vanilla though you that is completely fake it's it's full of sulfites it's a byproduct actually of the wood industry how's your waffle camera person good so here i mean if you could smell this you'd never go back to extract i promise you so putting a teaspoon of that in and i will say though if you're going to make a pizza do that thing in the panini press it might take 10 minutes longer if you are familiar with jane velez mitchell i was on her show new day new chef and i show you how to make the pizza with the hash browns and it's pretty cool. So then I'm gonna use a quarter cup, not too much of date paste, excuse me, date syrup. This is from I Love Date Lady. I believe I have a discount code of 10 or 15% if you use AJ or Chef AJ. And this is an organic date syrup. It's made from just dates. And I'm not using that much. I'm using four tablespoons, which will you know be on 12 muffins. So that would be like, I don't know, one teaspoon of, oh, let's see. Four, that's four tables. Yeah, that's like a teaspoon per muffin. So it's not that much. Let me get enough. I want, I want to get every bit of date syrup out of here. Okay. I mean, this bottle, I've had this bottle for like ever. I've taken it to Mexico and back with me. Like, it was there three times last year teaching and one time this year. So won't use that much of it. Now I'm just going to puree it. Right, I'm just going to stir this down. It might need just the smallest amount. And if it if it doesn't blend easily, oh, this is so good. You could frost a cake with this. If it doesn't blend easily, and it did blend easily, I would put a little bit of plant milk in. And if I was going to pipe it with a pastry bag, for sure I would. But I like this texture, so it's perfect because I'm just going to spread it. So I'm going to leave it as is. Now, unfortunately, it's not white because date syrup is brown. If you absolutely had to have it white, I can show you an example because uh, Faith from the wonderful blog, Get to the Root, when she did the photos for these, you can see how white it is. Well, what she did is she used date sugar, which was much lighter. And I suppose if you used agave, it would be lighter, but agave, you know, it's not really healthy. It's very high in fructose, higher than actually uh, corn syrup. So I am going to take this and like I said, when it's when the muffins are cooled, I'm going to frost them and I'm just going to probably just take a little uh, scoop like I did to put the muffin cups in and just put a dollop on each one. And then what I usually do to garnish it is just sprinkle it with a little bit of reduced fat coconut, which I'll show you. But this is quite delicious, this frosting. 
And really you need the vanilla powder in frosting for sure. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned many years ago from my Italian sister-in-law when I was making 200 truffles for vegetarian Summerfest presentation. Uh, there was a lot of the batter on the blade and it was struggling to get it off. What you do is you put your food processor back on the, the food processor, you quickly press press, and what happens is in the centrifugal force, almost all that batter is off the blade. I mean, there's still a little bit, but compared to what there was, it's much better. And you end up getting, look at this. If I hadn't done this, I would have lost all this. It's at least a half a cup of frosting. So I'm just gonna leave that until it's time to frost. Distribute it evenly among the 12 cinnamon bun cupcakes, which I could see through my, I'm cooking them in my Breville. I'm using it as an oven on bake and you can see how beautifully they're rising. Okay, just make sure if you use uh, baking powder with sodium, please use aluminum free. I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Barnard's work, Power Foods for the Brain. We don't wanna be having aluminum in our baking powder. Okay, so there we have it. And this is very sweet, so we don't need a lot of this frosting and we'll just save it. And you can use it for other things as well. So the coconut that I use for sprinkling, just to make it look pretty, this is a reduced fat coconut, but you can use full fat if you like. All right, well, since I'm going so fast here, I'm gonna make another recipe. Um, I'm wondering if you could get me the, the natural milk machine so that I don't have to clean this in between yeah. things. So I'm gonna get another food processor because I need it to be dry for this next one. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite cookie. And this is called a snickerdoodle. So while my husband's getting me the nutri milk, the nutri milk is great, by the way, if you make plant milks or nut butters. I just used it yesterday for the first time to make tahini because I was so tired of, of paying so much money for, I mean, raw tahini was like, it's like $29 a jar. And it, it, it's, and the expiration date was like, the next day. So I just started using the nutri milk and I can make it in here and I make my husband's peanut butter and it takes a minute. I, I would show it to you except that because I have this new book out, I'm going live every single day at 5 p.m. doing dinner, four or five recipes from my book. And I'm actually doing the peanut butter tomorrow when I make the, the spicy peanut noodles. But it's really easy. You just put it in, you press a button for one minute and you've got nut butter. It's the same thing with plant milks. You can make oat milk, almond milk, cashew milk you name it. But I am just using this simply as a food processor here because of the fact that my other one is now wet and it would take time to wash it and dry it. So I'm going to take my little food scale here. Um, when you use the food scale, basically you can use any cup, but this one is the one that comes with it. So you have it on there. And then when you put it on, it shows that it's zero. And so I need 12 ounces of dates. I just buy the organic dates from Costco because I do like the Deglet Noor, even though technically the Medjool may be superior in taste if you're eating them, I like the drier aspect of this for what I do most of the time. So I would, I, I guess that 12 ounces of dates would probably be two cups, but see the problem is, is people measure very inconsistently. I know that because I was a culinary instructor at the Braille Institute for years and I could see and even through hands-on cooking classes with sighted people, some people top off their measurements, some people really pack it in. That's why I feel for accuracy, at least in baking recipes, an inexpensive food scale is the best. Okay, so where did my oats go? Over here. And again. So I'm using the nut milk just as a regular food processor. But what's cool about it is it has this thing and it turns it so that you don't have to keep starting and stopping and doing it yourself. So I'm putting in two cups of oats. This is crazy. This recipe has like four ingredients and it is so good. And there's an option to make it a, a ginger snap too. If you look on my YouTube channel, Chef AJ, I hope you'll consider subscribing because I do a daily live show every single day at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I haven't missed a broadcast since the pandemic began on March 20th, 2022. And I've done close to a thousand shows now, even interviewing your organizer, Mike Young, and probably some of the speakers at your summit, at your conference. Okay, so let's get the, uh, I can't, how can I keep losing vanilla powder? And this stuff's expensive. So we're gonna get some vanilla powder. 
If you ever want to get Chef AJ a present, I just had a birthday and so many people sent me wonderful things. Just send me vanilla powder because you know I'm going to use it. It's really like the greatest thing. Or, okay, so teaspoon of vanilla powder. Vanilla, believe it or not, is the second most expensive spice in the world, second only to, if you said saffron, you'd be correct. And really the demand comes from having um, vanilla ice cream, which believe it or not, even though, uh, I'm out, Nick, if you're watching, I'm out. Even though people say they're chocoholics, the number one most popular ice cream in the world is vanilla. So now I'm just gonna do what I did before. I'm just gonna kind of mix these oats a little bit. That was 30 seconds. This has a little timer on it. And people always ask, can I use oat flour? Well, you can, but it's gonna be much more expensive than just using oats. And also, I, like, I don't like it to, I don't like grinding it too fine. I like to have that texture. And so now I'm adding my dates. It's always a good idea to kind of squeeze them before you put them in, because every now and then uh, there'll be a pit and that could damage your blade. So I just kind of squeeze them before I put them in, even though they say pitted. You can often have a pit in there. So these are snickerdoodles. And the great thing about them is they take only about five to eight minutes to bake. I have something already in the oven, so I'm not gonna bake them right now. But you know, the truth is you, you don't have to cook these. This could be raw, raw and uncooked, not for a living through this, because like, again, I don't think raw people eat oats, but there, you don't, you could eat it without cooking it. So process this. Sometimes that happens, it could be a little bit there or something slowing it down. This would be a great streusel topping, by the way, what I just did. You know, I actually made a cherry cobbler on my channel yesterday. Actually, I probably should have used the bigger canister. Let's see if this can go one more time without doing that. Don't fail me now on the air, natural milk. People won't think you're great. Oh, all right. Well, this always happens when we're doing the, you know what? I'm, I'm going to use this one just because it's, one? yeah, I just, but then I'll have to dirty it again. Sorry. So we'll go back to this one. Oh. You're going to have to give me a second though to wash it. If you have any questions, you know, might be a good time to ask while I'm washing this, you know, or just what I could wipe it out too. I just don't want it wet. It's not that it has to be washed, but I don't want it wet. So I can't hear anybody. So I assume you're still there. Is this the same place I spoke when I came to the Florida Veg Fest uh, a few years ago when I spoke where Dr. Hans Deal was? Nobody's talking to me. Charles is First annual Savannah Veg Fest. First annual Savannah Veg Fest. And we have a question. Can you hear me, Shelby? Yeah, I can hear you great. Jeffrey, Jay, my question is, the vanilla powder is a one-on-one exchange the extract? Vanilla powder or one-on-one exchange for the extract? Oh, great question. Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The only thing is, when you're using alcohol-free vanilla, you tend to have to use more. So when I worked at the restaurant, we used alcohol-free vanilla because it was a place where a lot of celebrities came and many of them were in rehab for alcohol and you couldn't even use 
uh, uh, extract with alcohol. And so in that case, it was like if a recipe called for one teaspoon of regular vanilla extract, I would put in a tablespoon of alcohol free. But for vanilla extract, yeah, it's one to one. And I really encourage people to try it because I think you're going to really like it. And, you know, I mean, there's other ways in your, in your food bill that I, you know, I recommend you can skimp, but not on vanilla. It's just so good. I'll tell you, I would almost rather, no, not almost rather. I would rather not put vanilla in anymore than use extract. It's just, it's so pedestrian. What can I tell you? I'm not really a snob. It's just that those, it's just one of those things. So I'm going to put this, uh, the batter in here just to show you, because we're, what we're doing is we're just trying to make what's called a ball to form where the dates are like the glue and the sugar and the oats are like the flour. And anything you see me do with oats, you, you know, you could do with nuts. I just can't eat high fat foods like that and maintain my weight loss, but it, nuts would work. But oats are actually, you know, compared to most grains, no, oats are close to 20% fat. So they work great. Plenty of fat in oats. Oh, I see what happened here. This is what was the problem is, yeah. If you don't blame the nutri milk, never blame the machine, blame the human. I knew it. See, there was the, it was a safety thing. See, there was a pit in there, even with all my squeezing. So nutri milk, I, it's not your fault. It's my fault. But we switched it over and here it is. Now we're going to let this go until a ball forms. Except we got to plug it in. You put this in for me. Mm -hmm. The muffins are ready. Let me go get them and show them to you while this is processing. I knew it was a pit. I just knew it because what else would have made it stop like that? And that's why it's probably better to take the time to squeeze each one. Some chefs actually cut them in half. That's okay. That's okay. It will take a little bit longer in this machine than the nutri milk. I showed you what the cinnamon bun cupcakes look like. Now the important thing is to just let them cool. I even tried to poke it from the bottom and I was gonna show you and it just, it won't stick together. So you just gotta be patient. And I just usually let it cool in the oven. So what I'm looking for, and this is almost ready, is what I call a break point. When I try to squeeze it together, you can see it's still kind of crumbly and it still falls apart. So it needs to go a little longer. Uh, I think about the nutri milk is it goes faster, but. Uh, most people don't have it, so we'll just use the regular. Right starts to slow down like it did you know it's basically ready and then what you do is you either roll it in a ball you could actually eat that or use a cookie scoop and then I'm using I know this looks a little dirty because I had my sweet potatoes to cook on it earlier so before I bake these I'll get a clean one but I roll them into a ball because if I roll them into a ball first and then I press them they're perfectly round and that's about the size that I like and then I bake them 350 for four minutes on one side 
with three or four of the other, it's going to depend on your oven. And these are amazing. I, I said 1020, so I could like quickly throw another recipe together, or if you, I'd like to leave time in case you have questions. If you eat this now, it's really, really soft. And I mean, it'll taste good, but I think cooking it a little bit is great. And I should show you, for example, these, especially if you keep them in, in a thing like this, this is called a zip top. I have two left. I always batch cook, so I knew that I was running low, so I wanted to make another batch, but these stay fresh forever in the zip top. And you can see that it, it doesn't bend quite as easily when they're cooked, but I prefer the little bit of cook texture. And look at that, a date pit in the bottom. I gotta be more careful, but these things are great. And I use them in the freezer as well. And almost everything I show you, I try to get a discount code for. So would you like me to leave some time for questions or throw something together really quick? All right. I can't tell. I'll just, uh, oh, I could show you another trick. I could show you another use for this. Let me show you something since I can't hear you. Um, this can be an incredible pie crust. So I can take this recipe for the snickerdoodle and just put it in a pie plate like this. We did this in Mexico to make our pies. And then this is a pie crust for whatever your pie is. And it's incredible. And that's when you just press it in. And I'll be doing this while I can answer any questions just to show you how versatile. I like, I love recipes that can more than one way. Hello, can I answer any questions or? Yeah, hold up your hand if you have a question for Chef AJ. Anybody? Question for her? Are there recipes in it? Is there recipes in your new book? Is that right, Chef AJ? Are these recipes in my book, did you say? Yes, are they? The new one? Um, yeah, no, you know, it's funny. I didn't do any recipes for my new book. These are found either on my YouTube channel, absolutely free, um, at least for the granola and the snickerdoodle. And the cinnamon bun is in the last book, Own Your Health. And what else did I make? I think that's all I made. Yeah. Oh, the, the, I'm not sure where the waffle is, but really, I mean, the waffle, it's not a recipe. You just, you just put hash brown and a waffle iron. So um, but most of my recipes are on YouTube. At least I try to get them up at some time in the course of the book. So okay, yeah. So the waffle that you made, how did you make that with the waffle iron? What kind of, what kind of waffle iron did you use for that? Um, my waffle iron is in my Amazon store. It's, it was $30. It's called Dash, D-A-S-H. I really bought it because it was pretty and it was red. I recommend a Belgian waffle maker. I think it's more fun to have those little indentations in your waffle, whether it's to hold syrup or ketchup. And uh, yeah, I've had it for quite a while and it, it seems to work pretty good. It's a nonstick though, a nonstick Belgian waffle maker. What's your recommendation yeah. for non-stick Recommendation for non-stick cookware. So I use, and I don't know if this is still available. I used to sell Pamper Chef like 30 years ago and I still have this pan and it is hard anodized steel rather than Teflon. It's never chipped or anything and it's like a lifetime guarantee and I love it because of the sides. But a lot of people like Mary McDougall have told me they use something called the scan pan. A lot of my chef friends use something called the green pan or the copper chef. I always say get the best that you can afford. Some people use waterless cookware, which is not nonstick. It's uh, like titanium or stainless steel and it still works. But I think if you're gonna do things like pancakes and um, a good nonstick pan is essential. Uh, I do a lot of uh, steam frying of ovens and caramelizing them without oil. So I love a good nonstick pan. I've cooked in my friend's copper chef and it worked very well. Some, some people use a ceramic pan. I think every chef you ask is gonna have a different answer. I think the more chefy chefs are gonna tell you, you know, stainless steel, but for oil-free, I think a good nonstick pan is essential. And, you know, yesterday I was on somebody else's channel and she used a $15 nonstick pan from Costco. She said it's like, she loves it. So yeah, um, my, mine, it happens to be Pampered Chef and it works very well. I'm just, oh, I'm just pressing this. I'm just pressing this. I'm, I'm just, while we're talking, I'm just pressing the snickerdoodle into the pie plate, which could be used as a raw crust or a cooked crust if I want to fill it with some kind of fruit or something. Very easy to make. And I just used my finger to get that lip up. 
but it's such an easy pie crust and it doesn't need oil or flour or, or sugar like a traditional pie crust. It's actually the best part of the pie. We have another question come out. All right, we have another question about air frying. As do you think that it's healthy? Well, I got it. I got an email from Dr. Greg that said, as long as you don't air fry sardines, it's healthy. I think it depends how, what you're air frying and, and, and how long and if you're blackening your food, because, you know, I think that there's more harm from eating oil than from putting your food in an air fryer. And um, a lot of people won't eat vegetables, which, as you know, are one of the healthiest foods on the planet, unless they're air fried, especially as they're adjusting to taste neuroadaptation and it can make all the difference in the world to get somebody to eat healthy food. That said, I, you know, been vegan for 45 years. I've had an air fryer, maybe five of those, and I did just fine without them. But now that I have it, I love it. I use it because I love crisp food like French fries. And, um, you know, you don't have to have an air fryer to be successful or happy, but I think they're fantastic. And I don't know if Dr. Gregor currently has anything on his channel, but I do remember corresponding with him and a, and a plant-based chef, J.L. Fields, in getting the research that they're completely safe, um, especially when you're not using oil or that. And I could probably find that article for you too. I'm not, not right now, but my hands are in the pie. But yeah, so I love my air fryer. I love my Instant Pot. Um, but again, you know, uh, I always tell people, do the least restrictive diet you can do that'll get you the results you seek. And if that doesn't involve an air fryer, it's okay. But I love it. I mean, Brussels sprouts in an air fryer, broccoli in an air fryer, it's it's game changing for a lot of people. It just makes it delicious. I, that I didn't hear. Shelly, have you uh, used a smokeless grill at all? I got one recently and it's awesome. I haven't, but I'd love to hear more about it and watch a video. I don't, I don't have any kind of a grill. I actually have what's called a grill pan from Pamper Chef, but I don't have a grill, but that sounds amazing. There's a brand that has the word home in it that's on sale as of yesterday. It was still on Amazon for like $80. And I got lucky and I got it for free and it's been amazing, especially when we do some of the pre-made burgers that are not the healthiest, I think it, it helps because a lot of the fat drips through and it doesn't sit there cooking in it. But I do my, uh, I'll just slice up zucchini and it got really nice. It looks beautiful. That sounds great. So here's my pie crust made out of the snickerdoodle cookie recipe. And it's fantastic. And I'll put some fruit on this and I'll have a pie later. Anybody else? You're outdoors, I'm indoors. I remember when I spoke at the Florida Veg Fest and it started raining right in the middle of my presentation. I was giving my calorie density talk with an umbrella. That was a first. Chef AJ, first, before I ask my question, I'd like to shout out a big thank you. We've got many fans here at the Savannah Veg Fest from Sun City Hilton Head. Oh, I love that place. That's a, oh my God, that, I would have moved here. Yes, I would have moved here if it wasn't in, uh, if it was in California, I would have moved to your community. I loved it. Really so, what is your favorite flavor of balsamic vinegar these days? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna show you. It changes, but this is my favorite. I gotta say, smoked hickory, because it tastes like barbecue sauce. And you take two tablespoons of this and two tablespoons of tomato paste and you got barbecue sauce to dip your fries. So this is my favorite, followed closely by curry, seven herb Italian, teriyaki, sweet heat. But they have a new orange that's pretty, I, you know, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just do it this way. The only flavor of California balsamic vinegar that I don't like is lavender. And I just gave it away to another vegan chef. And it's not because it's not good, it's because I don't like the taste of lavender. I like the smell of lavender, but not the taste. But this one, I love it. Can I just make a little shameless plug? If you buy my book by April 3rd, midnight, Pacific time, the year 2022, we'll send you almost $100 worth of great bonuses, exclusive cooking classes, the audio files of the book. This is the 10th anniversary edition with a new forward by Dr. John McDougall. And what's really cool is we got photos now. People seem to really want photos and Hannah Kaminsky did the photos and they are 
really amazing. I wanted to show you the lasagna. Yeah, I guess you're in the audience who has it with her. She just got it today. So she said anybody's more than welcome to take a look right over here. We made this the other night. So if you're going to buy it, I'd love for you to help me out early because it just helps vegan books in general when they do well at the beginning of them coming out. So yeah, that's good. Thank, thank, you. thank you so very much for the amazing food demo for answering some questions. Big round of applause for Chef Nathan. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but one day we'll be flying again. Thank you, Chef Nathan. Bye. Take care. Bye, everybody. Eat well. Stay well. Okay. So, um